Maimur Zion, the Acher Shmiris Haluchos, He Isher Koyach to Moshe Rabbeinu, all of us all. When Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchos, he received a new Koyach. Hence, the Gemara, which says to Moshe, Hashem said to Moshe, He Yasher Koyach, Sheshi Barta. Yasher Koyach, not thank you, but New koach, all the power to you. <laughs> he broke the luchos. So he actually received koach. Why would he receive koach from the shvir saluchos? What, kind of, what kind of koach do you get from the shvir saluchos? So that's what we've been learning for the last uh, couple of weeks, that the shvir saluchos meant that no more free gilui from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. No more like free episodes. <laughs> now, it's ours. We have to be it, we have to absorb it, we have to internalize it, we have to search very, very deep within us to do it. We have to do tshuva. After the Maisa Eagle, we have to do tshuva. Bakam Shabali tshuva. So there was a certain um, depth that was necessary um, after the Luchos, and that, that was a koach. That gave a new koach. It was uh, ironically liberating. Um, to to uh, to Moshe Rabbeinu, amazing. Vehu mashin ischazek lishol. It was only then that he had the chizuk to say to Hashem, "Harini nos kvodecha." Let me see what's. Let me see. And what did Hashem answer him? Lo irani ha'adam b'chai. It's impossible to see me and con- and continue to live. So, in other words, Moshe Rabbeinu went and asked the impossible. Says Reb Tzadok, Mashen Ken Koydem. Before there was a Shvir Salucha, it's Namar. But the but the Eagle says Vaye Vayaster Moshe Panov Ki Yare Mahabit. So this is like um, this is like an interesting uh, uh, dilemma almost. Amar Lei Hashem said this to Gemara Brachos. We learned this together. Lachad Manda Amar. Amr like his Ratsisi la Ratsisa, Akshav, Sha'ata writes Ani and he writes it. Okay, so let's let's review. The Gemara tells us that well, the Chumash tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu came upon the Sne, and when he saw the Sne, um Vayaster Moshe Panov, he hid his face. Hiding your face means I don't I don't want to see what you want to show me. I don't want the experience that you want to give me. That's what hiding your face means. He hid his face. Um, so the Gemara says that when he, by the Lucha Shneus, when he was in Harsinai the second time, or third time, when he, so he says, Ta'kadosh Baruch Hashem was Bekabalos, Tshuva, Salachti, Kitvarecha. He said, Haredi das Kodecha. So Hashem says, Kishur Atzisi, Lir Atzisi. I wanted to, that's what I wanted by the snap. You know, and you didn't want. So now you do want. So the kasha is just jumping ahead. What do you mean? Uh, it, means it means to say that by the sne, he could have had this giloy. I lo yirani adam mechai. If Moshe Rabbeinu indeed was asking the impossible dream, if he was asking for the impossible request to the answer, Hashem said, "Moshe, I'll give you anything. I'll do anything for you." But lo yirani adam mechai. You can't. This is not something the live people are supposed to. So how could the Gemara go ahead and say that when you were by the sna, I wanted to give you this exact gilui in Kisharatzisi Loi Ratzisa. I wanted to give you that gilui. So Mashma that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give Moshe Rabbeinu a gilui, which was impossible for him to be Makabal. But it would have happened, because nothing's impossible by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So even though after the Luch he said, Loi Rani Adam I can't give you the gilui. The gilui, this exact gilui was offered to him. Just the Obek shot the Gibbard, the Pasha shot the Gibbard. Was Moshe Rabbeinu on a Madrega before they could have experienced it? Can you read? But Moshe Rabbeinu thought not. So I asked her, Moshe Panov. So Moshe Rabbeinu himself understood, this is, this is like the ironic uh, twist over here. Moshe Rabbeinu himself understood that this is impossible. What are you giving me such a gilui for? So I asked her, Moshe Panov. Got to the Luchoshnias, he said, okay, now I'm ready for that. Because <laughs> no, you're not ready for it. It's impossible. 
In other words, this, this, it's an impossible gidui that you want. Well, so what do you, you, you were offering it to me before. So, so is it impossible? Is it not impossible? Why did he not want it then? Why does he want it now? And why was it possible then and impossible now? Is that just deal with it. Deep questions, Bo Makab Shas. Yeah. Um, so this is not the Gemara is mashma. It's the Emes in the Gemara. That if it wouldn't be for the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu hit his face, because he didn't want to look at something which was beyond him, something which was hidden from him. He would have been able to see, you had a chance to see that which I'm telling you right now is impossible to see. <clears throat> so what was that hasaga? The hasaga was the hasaga of He would have had a picture of eternity. A human being can't, can't conceive of eternity. So here you have it's, a, it's such a, a complicated mice over here because you could have had this glimpse. I now I'm telling you it's impossible. So you could have had the impossible. But you didn't want it. You realized it was impossible at the time. You realized yourself it was impossible. So therefore you said, no, I don't want it. I asked her Moshe Pono. And I was right. That it's impossible because now that I'm asking you for it on Harsina the second time around, you're saying, Well, you're on the Odom Machai. Sorry, Moshe, it's impossible. So I was right. But that's not what Hashem says. Ratsisi, there was a time that you could have gotten the impossible, but that was a Gilead. So So why was it impossible then and, and impossible? And why was it possible then and impossible now? So the answer is like this the answer is that um, Kozman, um, that we're just getting a gilui from Hashem, like we're just getting a gilui from Hashem, that we're just a kli, so everything's possible. But once, once we bring it to the point of Shvir Saluchais and Shuva, and then now, um, on the one hand, we become empowered. And it's out Kedekach, the Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, now I'm ready. On the one hand, we become empowered, on the other hand, we become limited, because we're limited to what we can understand. We're not, we're, we're, what a Kodesh Baruch is going to give us, and a Nebu as a gift, Gift could be anything. You could, you could hit the jackpot. But but what's if, if we're limited to what we have to work for, obviously, uh, you know, how much money can we make without having this outside Yerusha lottery winning something? <laughs> yeah. So so the, it was two different bechinas over here. The bechina of Moshe Rabbeinu by the snare was a bechina of Tarshi Bixav, and by Tarshi Bixav anything goes. Moshe Rabbeinu, for some reason, which we have to learn, said, I don't want that. We asked her, Moshe Pono, I want something more. I want something different. I don't, that's not, I don't, I'm not right for that. We asked her, Moshe, and he could die. Now that he learned about Shuva, now he learned about Toiv in the Luchesh Neis. Now that he learned about, about the Isarus and the Lusato, so he says, okay, now I'm ready. He says, no, you can't have that. Kisratzisi, Laritzi, so that we could have done earlier. Because now you're in a Bechina of Tarsha Bopet. You're limited to your own Havana, if you will. So it's a mile and a chasar. But it gave, it gave Moshe to come. Now, Mashadisha Lavin is why didn't he want it when Hashem offered it to him? It was free. Like, what, you know, take the sample, take, the, take it. You know, why, why didn't he want it? So Chaim's thinking, well, Nama de Kisufa, he wanted to work for it. No, it, it's not, not that he wanted to work for it. He wanted a different type of asoka. Not a, not a, uh, it, was, it was much of a shock to him in the beginning at the snap. And now he's familiar with Hashem. He's been with Hashem. So it's, 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 he's a different person. He's a different outlook. Or there was Chuva. Or there was Chuva. Okay. So he says something interesting here. It's probably all of it's so. I'm saying, I'm saying it like uh, nobody, nobody in this room is winning the lottery for five million dollars and saying, "Nama de Kisufa." <laughs> I'll deal with that. I'll make the next five million I'll make with my own life. <laughs> it's nice to, uh, 
I said, nobody's going to give you a roof of $100 billion. I go, oh, I want to work for my money. Like, it's, not, uh, it's, not a, it's not the appropriate response. A gift for my Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu is saying to you, I want to show you. My, my, I want to show you my face. You don't want to see it. Okay, now, I already know it's quite enough. Uh, impossible. Tricky. So Rupsadik introduces here a new idea. You see something in these psukim here. What was Moshe Rabbeinu, if you go on with the psukim by the snap? Moshe Rabbeinu's taina to HaKadosh Baruch Moshe, when he was being appointed as the leader of the Jewish people, the shaliach, which is going to take Klai Yisrael out of its right. Well, what did he say? Hey, lo yaminu bi. People are never going to believe this story. I'm standing by his snap, I just spoke to me, and so we take him out of its tribe. Hey, lo yabidoli. That was a choshed b'ksher. The Gemara calls it. Why are you underestimating uh, Klai Yisrael? How do you know what they're going to believe, what they're not going to believe? Something we all do. You know, it's amazing what Klai Yisrael is ready to do. Masha choshed l'Yisrael v'hei lo yabidoli. Zehu mitzad shehayoloi chesorin emuna be'atzvoi. The problem with Moshe Rabbeinu was not that he didn't believe in Hashem, that he didn't believe in Hashem, Hashem Baruch, he didn't believe in himself. Moshe. Moshe. Yehu k'day v'hogad l'kach. V'alkein hister panav shechashem shem n'roi li skalosu. V'yaster Hashem panav as he felt he wasn't a roi l'kach. That was Avera. According to the first bond number of the Gemara, that was an Avera. You made a mistake. He could have had a total of his call. Oh, I'll show you something. We're son of himself in the Zidka Satanica. We're the Lashon over here. Kufnun Dalad. Kishen Shitzarach Adam Lahamid Bashem Yisparach Kach Tzarach Acher Kach Lahamid Ba'atzmai. Fighting words. Just like a person has to believe in Hashem, you have to believe in yourself. What, 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 What's it just like? Is it just like? Really, really. No, but like, was it like, like a psychological motivation? What's the, what's the, what's the nakuda here? What's the ruchnius nakuda? The ruchnius nakuda is that if I believe in Hashem, and I believe Hashem created the world, and I believe Hashem created me, um, I gotta believe that He created me for some kind of a purpose. So now comes my purpose. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a royal lekach. We asked her about Shapano. So, like the the uh, the lack of amuna in yourself means that when you, when it comes to actually like writing the check, the, all, for all the amuna that I, I believe, I believe all the Yudkin like I believe that she created the world. I believe there's such kachakratus. I believe there's the who I believe. But now, okay, so now do something. You're my shliach. I believe you created me. I believe you gave me the kachas that I need to do what I'm supposed to do in this world. Okay, do it. I asked her about Shapano. Wasn't it his humility that was getting in the way? So humility is a, so humility is tricky, tricky business here. Humility, because on the one hand, humility is like you know, there's nothing more disgusting than people do things that are royal. You know, I have a sugar ball guy, so I, I don't have this uh, by yeah. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a few days ago. So uh, you know, just uh, somebody like. Uh, uh, somebody in the community uh, sent an email out to all the rabbanim that uh, she's calling a meeting of all the rabbis to talk about the problem with the schools of Beit Shemesh. You know, I have to admit, like my, my initial reaction is like, who the hell are you? Because <laughs> 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 summoned all the rabbis to a to, to a meeting. Like, you know, what the what's the there's, there's like there's such a um, even though she's right, but there, there, <laughs> there, there's such a thing as. Um, a macker is Bukoyba, you know, like there's, there's such a thing as, you know. I want to tell you about my wife, Sarah from New York. He said that someone who says, I can't do something, he's not because. He said, I can't, that means he believes certain things that he can. There's nothing he can do. Everything is Gosh. So it's the, 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 the I look at Moshe Rabbeinu was Nechshomas. It's a tricky business. Because on the one hand, you don't want to go to a makam she'en a shaloi. It's very bad. It's, it's um, 
you know, I remember years ago I was a buffer, so I wrote a safer. I wrote Hadusha uh, Terad Yavavas. So, uh, so, so I was hesitant to uh, print it, not print it. I was 17, 16. Hadusha Terad Yavavas, first part of Yavavas. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote on, every, on every taste was a, a Yavavas. So uh, I, I remember uh, going to the Rashiva and I said, uh, you know, I'm hesitant to print it. What's your hesitation? <laughs> so, what's your hesitation? So I said, I, th I thought about it a little bit because, you know, I realized that when I said go analyze myself, I realized that somebody's going to pick it up and say, um, and who the heck is he to write a safe variety of us? The Rashiva says that they would be right. <laughs> <laughs> took care of that. <laughs> okay, it's good to have a good rabbi. Yeah. So you don't have to publish it? No, I don't want to publish it. <laughs> No, it, it was like this. It was it, 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 you know, tricky. These things are because um, I, I wanted to publish it without my anonymously because you know, you know, because not because of Avivus, uh, because you know, I don't want to, I want people to think like who's he to write us. So he said to me, "That's that's the guy who like the guy who is to publish it anonymously. If you if you're an of you probably publish it with your name." Am I giving everybody a headache? <laughs> I've had this headache for about 50 years. <laughs> it's a headache. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky business. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, Keshev Shetzarech Adam Lahavid Ba'ashem Yisbarech Katzarech Afrikach Lahavid Ba'atzmai. So Moshe Rabbeinu didn't believe that the Jewish people were, they're not in a Madriga, I'm not in a Madriga, hey, well, yeah, me to be. It's a... It's a you know, and so, so Hashem said, in that sense, Hashem said, listen, you're a tzisi, you're a tzisa, explaining the tzad of Ereshim. So, so says your tzad, as hell me tzad, shayu lo'i chesar namuna ba'atzmai, shiyahu k'day v'hagun l'kach. Well, came, kister padav, shechash of she'edu roi, l'yizkal azu. V'av shara, shashem yizbarach roi, l'yizkal azu. Okay, kasha and my anivus, HaKadosh Baruch was telling me, I want to be megala to you, so Mustama Amaray look after the Scala. Hashav Shizella Basai. Whoa, this makes like this makes like really difficult. Maybe it's only in the Soya. Maybe the right answer is by Astra Moshe Banov, like Rav Shul Bar Nachmedi says later on in the Gemara. So if 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 how do I, what's the correct way to respond to a Gilui which you feel that you're not right for? What's the correct way to respond? Shalaya Ares, he don't want to do the same thing as Nadav Avihu. Shamar Moshe Rabbeinu of all of us Shamar Lehm Shigdoilu Mi Manu Mi Meyara. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't do it yet at this point, but he he knew that there's this idea of Nadav Avihu of stepping. What was the chet of Nadav Avihu? They were bigger than Moshe Rabbeinu, but the chet was they stepped into a place which was not with the Madrigosim. Maybe the Kaddish Rav was offering it then to, to maybe Moshe. It's a, maybe it's an Nesayim. Maybe it's an Nesayim. What's the Nesayim? To realize you're Madriga. You see, you see, like, look, to imagine yourself in this situation. Like, imagine yourself, you walk into a shul, and, uh, you know, everybody says, oh, come, come sit up in front. Clash of a match come sit up in front. <laughs> You just start feeling like, uh, what, like, what, like, what are the ramifications of this? <laughs> what, what, what does this mean? So, like, it becomes like, is this, like, is the proper response to, to okay, you know, the, the offer is there, obviously, but each chashem, so I sit up in front, or is, the, is it a messiah, am I supposed to say, no, 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 all the animas to you know. So I don't know. Like my mother taught me, the right response to these things is "thank you" <laughs> and, and, and "take your seat." Like you know, just, just you don't have to, you know, uh, push everything away. Moshe Rabbeinu was was uh, is this a Messiah that I'm supposed to show that I'm not trying to be out of a drag shade or shalom, <clears throat> or is this an opportunity where Hashem is saying to me, "Go for it." I'm showing. I'm giving you a chance right now. This now was a chance at the impossible. It's the only chance for the impossible. Because you're Ritzi, so Ritzi. 
Not of Avil, were Chayiv, Nishayiv, Miyaz, Ava Yechsu, a Salakim, my Shamar Chazal, Gmar, Oinsham, Hayagam, came the Mice of the Chashoi, Shibifnim, Bahasagas, or Elyon, Shilamala, Mikhail, Chasagas, or the Machayim. That they were trying to get beyond what they could get. O Moshe Rabbeinu, all of us, 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 and here you have the disciple. What page are we on? 3.30. Moshe Rabbeinu, there's a new thing about Moshe Rabbeinu we never thought about before maybe. That Moshe Rabbeinu knew never to look and never to peek into a place where he doesn't belong. What does it say? Arbanich Nesula Pardes. Ben Azai. He tzitz vameis and zayma he tzitz v'nitraf. They peeped. <laughs> what are you looking? It's not for you to look. Rabbi Kiva knew. Rabbi Kiva, the Gilgul of Moshe Rabbeinu, nichnas b'shalom v'yatzav b'shalom. He knew not to look where he's not supposed to look. I don't even know how to translate this clearly into our terms. Uboy omoyed. Listen to the oil omoyed yosham loy minatzad. Moshe Rabbeinu sat in the corner of the oil moed at Vayikra with a little olive of Vayikra El Moshe. Hashem had to call Moshe come. That was his anivas. Vayikra El Moshe, the little olive, was because uh, until he's called, he's not coming. Moshe Amar Chazal Ba'af Shekibel Torah Ba'ala Lamarim. So what do you talk about, Moshe? Didn't you just get the Torah at Harsidai? Didn't you just go up at Harsidai and see Pal Pal with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Pal 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 with Hakadosh Baruch Hu? Now you're afraid to walk it into the oil boy. Baitcha. Like, where, where is this real? Like, what's the Malkum for our neighbors? We we see a Hakadosh Baruch Hu chose it. Horid Shchina B'Tachtonim. Aren't you the one that brought the Shchina B'Chatonim? B'Chol Agadulays. Aval Pikain, Loi Ramu, Eno, Lachshav, Shuroi, Likrio. So he did not make it, there was no presumptions here. He made no, he did not assume that he's right to be in the oil. My getting the rest, of the, the second part <coughs> of, of the Torah. Dilafamim, I'll drill out of all your sight. Dilafamim, Hashem, Yisparach, Poyal, Gedulai, Skamal, Yedei, Mishain, Roi, Lakach. Who knows? Sometimes Hashem picks a shaliach who's talking about Roy Lukach. This was, by the way, the Nisayan of Esther. Am I, am I really like am I really like the woman who's going to save the Jewish people here? The heroine of Klai Yisrael that's going to go down in history, become a book in Tanakh. It's going to be named after me. I mean, I don't know who, what Esther was, who Esther was. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, paskating out Esther, but it's not so posh. Like who she was, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if she exactly was like, you know, like Rebbe Zekhanevsky or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, but, but what, what, what was the Dakota here that Mordechai told her that, look, this is, your, this is your moment here. You have a moment. Be your day in Lays because I see not the Who knows? Maybe this is the whole thing. Like, who knows? We all know. In retrospect, we all know. Even who knows? Be your day, because everybody knows that that's why Esther was there. Otherwise, you know, it would have been a book of Esther. We all we all know, but she didn't know because she had to she had to be modeled with with her current situation, or by going to a place like let's go and approach Achashverosh, like Biyani, Biyani, Biyani. So, like, this is a very big uh, decision here. That on the one hand, you know. You can't be stupid and jump to a place where had you had koyfitz l'roish. On the other hand, like as he says, kashem should sarech la adam lahabit b'ashem yisrach kach sarech after kach lahabit b'atzma. I was created. I do have a show. I do have a time. There is an opportunity. So the stubble has something. The stubble has an opportunity. I have to jump in. Does this speak to you? It speaks to me like this. This comes up. Comes up. Same thing with Barak and uh, and uh, Devara. It was his, his opportunity. He lost. 
It's possible. Kisharatsisi, Loi Ratsisi. So Moshe Rabbeinu figured that, uh, okay, you know, two fellows, it was just like something, he was at the right place at the right time. He happened to be walking by the snap. <laughs> and he ended up, you know, getting the Torah of Arsene, the Hubi. Lefamim, Hashem Yisbarach, Poyal Gedulois, Gam al Yedei Mishain Roy Lukach. Al Derev, Pacham Oisi Es Asher Achoim, Vericham Ti Es Asher Arachim. It's chain, chain, chain is lash and chinon. Chain is lash and chinon. Chanois has a shirachim. Who else had chain? Noach. Noach, chain. Lash and chinon. Who else had chain? Esther, matzah chain, baby. Chain is. So Moshe Rabbein thought it was chain. Yeah, Shem thinks I'm kind of cute. But he didn't. He didn't. See it as what he was. That was Afal Bishayda Kedai. Afal Bishayda Kedai. Rak to the day, Kaima Shaita. He had a good moment. Asa Chol Chayf Chayf, it's the whole Nafesh. I was mentioning here, I was, uh, was on a play that was reading an uh, edition of uh, Psychology Today. Was it a magazine? Psychology Today. Yeah. So, um, it's like pop psychology. It was, they did this uh, interview that I read on the play from New York to California. Uh, interviewing all these great celebrities, uh, um, you know, you know, superstar football players, uh, movie stars, uh, politicians, presidents, kings, you know, like all these are like so. There's a number of questions they asked them all, and uh, it was basically like the common answers that went through all famous people. So usually the question is like, you know, how, what how do, to what do you attribute your success? But the, the question that like uh, grabbed me was, what's your greatest fear? So um, they all said in one language or another, the, the greatest fear is somebody's going to find out who I really am. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm going to be discovered. I'm going to be found out. You know, so there's like, uh, it's uh, amazing. Uh, one, of, one of the people they asked was uh, I think Paul McCartney. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's your big cuddle, you know, like, yeah. Not really. I just got away with murder over here. <laughs> like he's a, could be Emmis. I mean, like I don't, I don't know. Like, like the Rishima said, like you know, they're right. Like, but there, there, there is this. On the other hand, like if you look at it from a sort of secular point of view, all the artists that felt that they're not royal lakach, all the scientists that felt they're not royal lakach, all the talmidei chachamim, lahabdul, that felt that they're not royal lakach. If they would have stuck with that on you know, so nothing would have happened. So you take the step. On the other hand, if you take a step that that's not the right step. So then you become not of Aviu. Very tricky business. You got to get it right. So you have to spend a lot of time trying to get this thing right. Well, came God b'shlichus to Yitzias Mitzrayim. Came to the shlichus of Yitzias Mitzrayim. Sirei va'amar Moshe Rabbeinu said, "Mi anoichi ke'elach alparay." Same thing that uh, Esther said. Shlach no biad tishlach. That's what, Hashem, that's what Moshe Rabbeinu's response was to the um, to Hashem. You want a shaliach? Shlach no biyad tishlach. What does it mean? What does it mean? Shlach no biyad tishlach. Send me. Send an appropriate shaliach. A yad is a shaliach, right? Shaliach is yad arichta. Shlach no biyad tishlach. You're my yad. So Rashi says, Shlach no biyad tishlach. Shlach is Aaron. Good man. I have a brother Aaron. Chash of a person. He didn't spend 80 years in the Midbar and Mitya. He didn't, you know. Chash of a match. Everybody likes him. Everybody knows him. That's right. Uncle says, Gavaldo. Die while we're here. Shem says, "At the lake, I'm not here. I'm in Picha by Reisicha. Share to Dabber by Yomer." 
Moshe Rabbeinu says, Be Adonai. Shlach no biyad tishlach. So Rashi says, Biyad mishat arugul ishlach v'hu aru. So v'racher biyad acher shetirza lishlach. To get somebody who you really like. There's a lesson over here. Shetirza lishlach. I'm not Shein Sofi Liyotlach Nisun Aretz Liyos Goyelum Lasset. I'm not going to be any Mashiach here. See, Moshe Rabbeinu was was thinking, you're making a Shliach. I mean, you want to make the Geula. Then he saw Baruch Hakodesh still at the Sna. I'm not going to end up for some reason or another. I'm not going to end up taking these people into Eretz Yisrael. That's what Rashi says. So I'm not any Mashiach. So if you don't really like me, I'm not really on the Madrig. If I'm not the Mashiach, so send with somebody who you think is the Mashiach. A lot of Mashiach. <laughs> be a lot of Mashiach. So who, who should he send? Send it with the Mashiach. That's what he says. Shlach no biyad tishlach. Send it with the Mashiach. Where's Rashi get this? I mean, he gets it from the Birgit of Elazar, but what, what's, the, what's the Pshat? So the Targum Yodas and Bedazil says, Ba'abar b'voy b'rachman kadama Hashem shalach kidon shlichusecha biyad pinchas. This week's parasha. Send pinchas. Pinchas is a good man for this job. <laughs> he's giving, uh, because he's the one who's going to deliver us at the end of days. Pinchas Zu. So, so Pinchas is the man, you know, to, 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 to do this. I'm not the man. And Hashem got angry at Moshe. This man. And he said, I know about Aaron. <laughs> you know, you know, I remember when I, when I was a uh, rubber buffalo, there was, there was a bunch of the Holocaust survivors where the, uh, was the Muslim hate minion, you know, Gishmaki, and they used to scream at each other all the time. So, so, so I remember, like, the Gabbai, tough man, the, the Gabbai used to, used to say, uh, you know, Shachris. Shadam and Shachris, and they would say, uh, maybe, maybe he'll die in Shach. Shit, British seed, so I'm better. Don't send me your turn. Don't tell me what to do. Like I told, like I couldn't stand that somebody even. Maybe he's better. I'm, I'm asking you, right? I'm asking you. What are you asking? Shit, British seed, so I'm better. Good morning with this guy. <laughs> On the other hand, if you said yes too fast, he would say, what? You don't know the halacha you're supposed to be Masar of Gimel Bav? It sounds much like Hashem and Moshe. This is like exactly what's going on. It's tricky business. If he says, okay, I'm ready. Let me see. Let me see the full Giloi. So I don't know who you think you are. So he, says, so he says, okay, no, it's not for me. Shlach not beyond Hashem. But Yichar Av Hashem and Moshe. Haloi Arnachi Chalev Yadati. Kidabri Yadabrihu. I know it's Pinchas and I know Aaron. I'm talking to you. That's what I'm talking to. So this was this was Moshe Rabbeinu's problem. He lay rotsa. Shlach no biyad tishlach lo rotsa loymer biyad misha hu roy lekach she tishlach al yada. He didn't see himself as a roy lekach. He lay rotsa liga b'masha enoi muchan loy because he did not want to approach that which was not correct for him. Something which he wasn't ready for. Shazehu, now here we have a very important Shazehu rak lisha de kaimele will allow my ad. Let's not make a mistake, as Ratzonik explains. It's not that Moshe Rabbeinu thought that he's not going to be able to get the gilu. Again, let's, let's make a sequel here. Akadosh Baruch Hu says to him by the snap, I'm willing to show you something which nobody will ever get a chance to see again. What is that? Eternity. Olam Haba. I'm willing to give you like a real trip here. I'm willing to give you a real vision of something that, that nobody, and even that you later on said, Hareini nos kvoidecha, lo yirani odom v'chai. Impossible. You're asking me something about it. I can't do what's impossible. Said, Hashem says, not impossible for me. It's impossible for you. You're a human, so called self. You can't do it. But at this moment, he was a human. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying that, no, I'm not Roy Lakach really. To get this type of a gilui, I'm not Roy Lakach. I can't I can't do it. I can't borrow my yich shlach no biyad tishlach. Send somebody else. Send somebody who you really like, send somebody who's gonna be so what was the Nakuda here? So it says Rip Sadak, like the Nakuda was that he realized that if he gets this gilui 
it's going to be a temporary Gilui. It's not going to be what we want. He never, and this, this is consistent with the Moshe Rabbeinu, he never saw anything that was given to him, even by Ben Har Sinai, as something permanent. It was like two fellows, okay, there's nobody else, I'll do it. He didn't see it, he didn't see himself as, he didn't see it as, as it did of the Gavra. He saw it as it did of the Chafza. I'm here, okay, help me. Do it. I, I'm the one. Somehow or another, I'm the one. I picked. But, but I was picked. But it, it, he didn't see it as a, a worthiness from within. What's the difference if it's worthy within or it's just an opportunity at the moment? Whether it's going to be something that's going to last. So comes the Targum of Yonis and and he says, look, you want something that's going to be everlasting? Take Pitchless, Pitchless, do Elio. He keeps coming back and back and back. And Rechel Siddur Shemai says, Elio, no, he's forever. I'm not forever. Nobody sees Moshe Rabbein doing the only thing we don't know me. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a forever person. He didn't see himself as not so ironic. It's ironic. Was this shiftless what he was experiencing, or not quite? So you know, you know, so what it all comes down to. But, but, but before we get to that very important question, I just want to say that the the Nakuta here is that Moshe Rabbeinu's barometer of real or not real is whether it's going to last. New uh, Knech. If if it's rock with Shah, so take it. I mean. It, it, Take it, because Rabbi was giving you the gilui of, of uh, the gilui of Nobody ever before or after is going to have this gilui. Take it. I'm, I'm not worthy of this. It's rock l'sha. I'll have a high, but it's not l'sha. You know, it's like it, it just reminds of Askir, like the the, the Balatanya says that uh, in the Karagwam Gimel and Amadal, he says that that uh, you know Isarusa de la Ela is a very tricky business. I mean, you could be you could be walking on the street someplace and and the middle of who knows where, and get just such a hisirus, um, such a hisirus of delay. Like you have such a hisirus. Wow! Like you can see your whole world, and you can see what I could become. It could become like from nowhere, just from nowhere. So that's that's hisirus of delay. It's a gift, like a nevuah almost. That, you, that a person and we all have this once in a while. But he says that if if you don't quickly, quickly internalize it, make it into something real, bring it into yourself, then not only is it going to just fly away, it's all, it actually becomes a chasar, as you get all the weirdos. In other words, it, 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 it stops right there at the Sarusa de la Ela, then you walk around like I'm some kind of a Navi. And you're not. So, so in other words, you, what, what happens is you start off with this tremendous chasar, a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. True, it's a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now do something with it. But if you're not going to do something with it, then you just become a flake. So, so this was this was Moshe Rabbeinu's thing. Like, like I'm not really Roy Lukach. So, what was his ha'aza that he had then when he came after the Luchos Shniyos to say Harini Nas Koydecha? Because he knew that now I'm not a flake any longer. This is this is this is very very real now because now I broke the Luchos. Uh, there's Shichas Hatayra. Um, they built the eagle, they got that out of their system, they did shuva on, on, on building the eagle. Tarish Shemel Peh, Toiv, Barach to Yamim. It's Toiv in the Luchay There's something, and that's what Roshmul Bar Nachmeni says at the end of the Gemara, that Beschus Vayaster by Shepolov, Zachal a cluster upon him. Beschus Vayera Moshe, the Moshe Rosabed, Ziv Vayore Migesh, I say, love. People were afraid of Moshe. So what happened? It went from going a din in the Chefza to a din in the Gavra. When he realized that he could internalize the whole thing and it became his, and, and it was, it actually affected the way he looked and it affected the way he, uh, I, I, saw, I saw something once in the Shalom HaKadosh, the Sharoisius, where he talks about Tzfilah. So he says that sometimes a person in the middle of Davidic, uh, from nowhere could be or to could have could have dima. You can start crying in the middle of davening. So uh, he says it like you think. He says, "Well, I wasn't having that much come out of why am I crying here?" But the answer is that when there's a certain filler which is the gate to what you need. So even if you're not having kavod or your neshama is having, 
the shovel's paying attention, the shovel's away. So, you know, sometimes I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, and, and what did I just say? I really had a service. I mean, yeah, I didn't come to do this as a, uh, as a gift from Hashem. So, you can wake up in the middle of the day, you know, it's a, 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 it's the tears that are coming out of your eyes and rub them into your face and that'll make your face shine. You'll have the cluster panam of Moshe Rabbeinu because what you're doing there is you're taking the sarusa de la ela and you're absorbing it uh, uh, within. Meaning the, the symbolism is that you're rubbing the tears into your face. The, the deep part of it is, okay, so Hashem gave you my time, now take a step and, and, and do something with that too. Do something with the tefillah. Make, make, make the tears, rub, rub, rub them in, rub them in, and your zayfa to cluster upon him. Exactly, exactly the Indian of Moshe Rabbeinu, that here I'm on Harsinai, second time around, zayfa to cluster upon him. So Shmuel Bar Nachmani says, okay, uh, before I didn't want it, 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 because I realized it was a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it was Rak Shah, and I'm just the right guy at the right time. I happen to be walking by the snow right now. Fine, now I know I deserve it. So the, 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 to start to end off with where we started, so the downside is, I'm sorry, <laughs> what you, this is not something that a human is going to be able to come to on his own. It's not something that's going to happen. You're much bigger than that. So, so there is, there is um, let, let's put it this way. So what happened from the time of the snap over the next couple of years to the time of the Lucha Shniyas on Yom Kippur, Tavdunas Alakim Alahar Hazeh. What happened was that Moshe Rabbeinu, I mean, about the Pacha to talk about Moshe Rabbeinu, like he's, like, uh, like he's my friend, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm just saying, Lafi Hasagasenu, that Moshe Rabbeinu came to a, a very, very correct and real um, um, medium and understanding as to who he was and what he was. That's, that's what seems to have happened. Where at the beginning it was Vayichar Af Hashem B'Moshe, but I'm, I'm telling you I want to give it to you. I did Gilui. Moshe Rabbeinu said no, not that. So, so the Anam Mikolatov he remained, but the Anam Mikolatov at the same time he was able to get angry at Korah, and at the same time he was able to, to you know, he he asserted himself. He even, according to Chazal, came, came to Mishnah Torah. He even lost his stutter, he lost his stammer. There, there was a certain. Stammer. Okay, we know the Midrash. It was also a, a, a self, a self um, understanding, a self. You know, who am I to speak? So you, you, so you, you stammer. Like we all stammer when we speak to a person who's very, very great. But then he spoke. He spoke and he spoke. And what a speech! Like you know, it was it was a perfect speech, poetic speech, a perfect uh, divine speech. So what I, what I'm saying is that there was a certain um, calibration of what he was and what his tachlis was and he understood on the one hand that this could be very real on the other hand listen to this his job was Rak Shah on the one hand his live job as a human was Rak Shah only until the going that, that was a big thing for Moshe Rebbe he said I'm not Mashiach because that means he wants to go to Eretz I'm not Mashiach Okay, if I'm not Mashiach, said Pinchas. So he understood that on the one hand, his, his, his life is limited. But what you do in your life, what we do in our life, has to be, that, that limited piece has to be 100% full. And on the other hand, there was something unlimited about Moshe Rabbeinu, because like you say, Moshe Rabbeinu was Netzach, right? He said, you're learning Taras Moshe. So, so Moshe Rabbeinu did something which was like forever and ever and ever. It gets only better. It's like it's like a, it's like wine. It gets it gets a little better. So so there was a nitzchius, but it wasn't the nitzchius that he thought he wanted. He thought he said, okay, nitzchius means I'm going to Teres Israel for the people. No, your netzach is a Torah. Hmm. People will be learning your Torah. Lo oh my God, that's the uh, that's the eternity that we're talking about. So there was a certain calibration here that made Moshe the the uh, the one hand the onu and the other hand the takif, and, and, and the exact the exact right. Uh, Rabbeinu, <laughs> Rabbeinu, he's, he became the Rebbe of Klai Israel. So on Wednesday we'll learn Shmuel Bar Nachmani's side of the story. <laughs>